So let's see. Hello. Morning, 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 everybody. Y'all hearing me? Good morning. So yes, yes. yes. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, yes. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome. First time already talking with you all. So a pleasant good, good morning. morning in terms of, of welcome to SNF2. And let me see who I have there. Who we have there present. I have Oreen, Brenton, Crystal, Eliza, Fiona, Frida, Hadaya, or Hadia, Hannah. Hazel, Mariah, Mira, uh, Rosa, Shania, uh, Shamika, and Trinell. So a special welcome to everybody. Let me just quickly, um, yeah, Mariah gave a shout out on the chat as well. So welcome to the class. So in terms of today, what we'll be doing, I'll go through an introduction with you, and then we'll see how the lecture goes. We don't have lab today, lab starts next week. So just to keep that in mind, and um, we'll see how the, the structure of the lecture goes. We, we have a new format this semester and we'll, we'll see how that uh, meshes with you. So let's go. So I bring you greetings on behalf, of course, of our president, Dr. Gillian Paul, on behalf of, uh, on behalf of the Dean of the School of Nursing, Health and Environmental Sciences, Ms. Anjani Dwaraka, on behalf of the chair, of our department, Ms. Delamay Wilson, on behalf of the course coordinator, Dr. Saida Sattar. My name is Dr. Patrick Campbell, and I'll be a lecturer for both for the lecture and the lab for this semester. And I do look forward to having an enjoyable time with you as we peruse through SNF2. Now, in terms of the semester itself, uh, these are just some important points. Well, the semester began almost, well, going on to a month now, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, your first assessment uh, will will be, or well, this, this is the first assessment, the final assessment period will be 4 to the 7th. This is showing the duration. The semester ends on the 24th, but during this period, the fourth to the seventh, sorry, this is when your final exam will be. So there is this is for the semester, speaking about that. Now, usually, before we go any further, I always like to ask for introductions. So if you will, just give me a name, where you're from, something you like to do, that is not illegal, immoral, or fattening, all right? So let me start first. So my name is Patrick Campbell. Um, I'm from San Fernando originally. I live in St. Augustine now. Um, what do I like to do? Hmm, well, while going through school, I actually played cricket, football, pan, and I was also used to sing as well. Um, what I like to do is follow West Indies cricket, cricket in general. I don't know who was following last night. The Talawas from Jamaica won. It, sorry, they won the the cricket. Interestingly enough, they are, their coach is from Guyana, Shivarain Chandrapal. But um, they, they played very well. Um, the Barbados Tridents, they, um, they came in, they started off good. But then they, they they fell off, you know, towards the end. So good victory there by the Jamaica Talawas. Yeah, but I like to follow sports in general, and I appreciate sports. I think more so from the perspective because I played sports, and you know, so you appreciate talent when you see it. So, if you would just say your name, where you're from, and something you like to do. That is not illegal, immoral, or fattening. And when you're saying where you're from, you could just say north, south, east, or west. You don't have to get into a lot of detail. Okay? So, Afisha, if you would, we'll just follow the order in the chat. Mm -hmm. Good morning, everyone. My name is Afisha Carr. I am from Devo Martin. What I like is I like to cook. You what? know, um, yes? Mm -hmm. What is the best thing you could cook with your eyes closed? I like a seafood boil. What you saying? Seafood boil, <laughs> crab. What, what, crab. What does it, what, uh, what does it con consist of? It's a, mm. it's a Cajun one. Right? I like it a little spicy. What so you saying? <laughs> so I like a little sausage, um, mm. some egg, some shrimp. And, mm. you know, I, I probably might try a crab, but I don't really like crab. I prefer shrimp. 
Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. and um, my family loves it. You know, it's, it's a new thing for me. It is, I yeah. like to I like to try new things. I also like Chinese food a lot. I love to cook Chinese food. What you um, saying? <laughs> what is the most important ingredient in cooking fried rice? What's the most important? It has numerous in- ingredients. <clears throat> I prefer ginger, a real strong <clears throat> ginger, or no. sesame. No, uh, sesame oil. the most okay, important, the most important ingredient is the pot. You know, have a walk, <laughs> it don't make sense. You might as well go and boil an egg. <laughs> a mm. teaser here, but you're quite right. Have a lot of ingredients, but ginger, yeah, those aromatics are really important. Yes, yes, in particular, yes. ginger, Bring yeah. Some flavors. Indeed, indeed. You, you sound like a true, true cook there, Fisher. Thanks a lot. <laughs> okay. Okay, Thank who's you. next? You're welcome. Allison? Okay, Alison stepped out for a cup of tea. It happens. Afisha, if you would. Now, don't feel, if you don't want to say anything, just don't say anything and you could type something in the chat. You know, that's fine. So don't, don't feel pressured by any means, all right? I went already, sir. So, Alana. Mm-hmm. Hi, good morning, everyone. Good morning, morning. morning. Okay, that was a short presentation. <laughs> we do, a, or maybe she, maybe she lost uh, contact there. Not a problem. Not a problem, Alana. You there? Uh, you know how it is sometimes with communication. Yeah, probably a little trouble with the mic. Not an issue. We'll come back to you later, Alana. Allison. All right, Alison seems to be having a little trouble with her mic. Not a problem. Oreen. Good day, everyone. I'm Oreen Couture. I am from Diego Martin. Um, what I love doing is writing um, in terms of writing books. Um, I love reading as well. Um, I have always had a fascination when it comes to books since I was young. So. I um, decided at one point in time to just write my own book. <laughs> so were you successful in that regard, Oreen? Yes, I was. I wrote, what are you I saying? Written, I've written two books. <laughs> what are you saying? What in your slide, man? That's excellent. That's excellent. Have you published them? Are they available? Yes, they are published. What are you um, saying? I became, mm. I became my own um, self-publisher and started a publishing company. You making joke? That is phenomenal. That is phenomenal. Yeah. So, so are they your books available for sale and so on on your website? They are available. For what sale. you're saying? <laughs> Sometime or the other, you have to put the link on the um maybe in the WhatsApp chat so that people yes. you know could could make. But that's excellent, man. Thanks very much. Yes, that's me. Yeah, that's excellent. Excellent. Well done. <laughs> All right. So who's next after Oreen and um, Brenton? All right, Brenton seems to be having a little trouble with communicating, not an issue. Crystal? Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Crystal George. I'm from the San Juan area, and I enjoy reading, shopping, and <laughs> um, as of lately, just writing, journaling more often. What is it? In? True, true. For personal reasons, I enjoy writing a lot. True, true. You know, reflection, self-reflection is very important. I mean, who was it that said, you know, the unexamined life is indeed, you know, is virtually worthless in that regard. It's always good to do self-examination. That is really good, Crystal. Great. Thanks very much for sharing. All right. So after Crystal, who's next? Let me see. Eliza. Or Eli- Elisa, which one is it? Miss Elisa. 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 Ah. Yeah. Um, my name is Elisa Devik. I'm from Central and I like to read and um, watch K dramas, Korean dramas. Korean drama. What is it about Korean dramas you find fascinating? 
I don't know how it's my cousin is to just say it and ever since I get addicted to it, I'm not sure. <laughs> I hear you. Um, so where you get it? You get it um, on YouTube or, or on some channel on, online? Uh, well, that is a, web, a website called Drama Cool. Let's watch it. Oh, okay. Well, that is good. It's always good sometimes. I mean, the whole notion of just watching TV and so on, it takes you into another environment. Very much like reading. Okay, thanks very much. All right, so who's next? So we're going in order, or are you yeah. calling? Oh, okay. yeah, we okay. just, I don't know if y'all can see the, y'all can see the same order like me, you know, in terms of the so I, All I see is some requirements for lecture, huh? Okay, oh, like okay, it. all right. No, well, then I'll call it out then. So Fiona? Morning, everyone. Morning, Sue. Mm -hmm. Morning. Um, well, my name is Fiona Martin. I'm from Arupa. Um, like Sue said, yes, uh, I was following the CPL. I'm a big fan. I'm a 2PR for life, though. <laughs> but, well, hmm. what, what went wrong this? Night, what went wrong? What, in, in, in 10 seconds or 30 seconds or less, what went wrong? This this year. Um, I think I think what happened to them is maybe they just wasn't prepared. New players wasn't comfortable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Probably could be that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but hopefully they get this stuff together next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was really thrilled when I the game that I went. They what won. What you saying? So, I was real excited for that. You, you, you was up there in the, La, by the, in the Lara? You was there? Yes, yes. What you saying? That is good. That is good. So, um, I also like um, NFL. Mm -hmm. what, is, so, what, what is this? What team in the NFL? Anyone in particular? I just like watching it. Mm -hmm. And most of the time I go for underdog team. Mm -hmm. So... Like you see, like how it now starts. Yeah. I'll I'll watch games in between. But you see, when it come down to the last of the teams for the finals, I mm -hmm, will watch mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I because I love sports, I love playing netball. What is so it? What position you played? Mm -hmm. I have goal defense. Ooh. Oh, you gotta be up on your toes. Yeah, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I haven't played for a while though. Might I ask? I, I'm guessing you're tall then. No. You have long arms. No, I'm short. <laughs> All right. It does does that does it help if you're you're tall with long arms for goal defense, or it doesn't really matter? Um, is I think the reason why my mm -hmm. coach let me play that is because he he saw that I am probably a good defensive player mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because when I used to play, I was the captain of the team. Mm -hmm. So I think it was, I was just probably good at the position. I hear you. I hear you. I'm not mad with you because as I rightly say, when you look at sports, there are lots of persons who play within different positions and they're not really supposed to play. When you look at basketball, you have some short set people who are short who play centers, yeah. but they, you know, they get the job done. The bottom line is all about getting the job done at the end of the day. Yeah? So that's yeah. very good. That's very good to hear, man. Excellent. Thanks very much for sharing, okay? Thanks. All right. So let's see who's next. So that was for you now, Frida. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Frida Larosa, and I'm from Central. Um, I enjoy sewing. And I'm also into beauty aesthetics like facials and pedicures, manicures, and nails and so on. What are you saying? What, what, what is the latest nails they call them? Is it spikes? One of the long ones? Or making up? The long pointy ones? In terms of nails? So I'm, I'm not too sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably making up that name there. But but you know, they're they're long. They let's say they're they're, they're approximately well, it's false nails. 
the approximately, let's say the length of your finger, you know, and it has a bit of a pointed um, stilettos. I don't know. I, I don't know if I, I, maybe I'm making up the name as I go along. But yes, stilettos. Oh, it's stilettos. I was calling it the wrong name then. Yes, yes, yes. And, um, but most definitely in terms of aesthetics, you, you know, that is definitely has a lot of potential and it's always good to do the things you like. You can never tell where you could carry you. All right. Thanks very much for sharing. All right. Who's next? Is it her, Hadia? Hi, morning, everyone. My name is Hadia Melington. I'm from Arima and I enjoy making pizza. What is it? What's the best kind of pizza you can make, Hadia? A full on veggie, everything, complete pineapple, bacon, sausage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Again, me hungry. Again, me hungry. <laughs> That sounds great. Thanks very much for sharing. All right, Hannah. Good morning, everyone. My name is Hannah Gunner, and I'm in Tobago. I enjoy singing and sewing and making jello fries. What are you saying? When is all your carnival, Hannah? When are you coming up? Oh my gosh, I don't know. I don't know the actual date. I think it's, it's towards the end of the month or something like that. Go and start. I understand yes. you, you, you're going to you're going to rent out the, is the PT James and send it across for all Costard students to come. Somebody told me that. Is that true? Really? Oh, no. OK. OK. No, I, I just make a joke with you because you sound like you're taking me exceptionally seriously. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but yeah. but I'm sure. How is Tobago doing in terms of preparations for carnival? Is there anything significantly different about the whole atmosphere? Are they putting things up? Is there a lot of ads on the radio, TV? How, how things are different? Or, or is it just business as usual so far? Um, oh, yes. Um, everyone is preparing, looking forward for the day. Mm -hmm. And they are getting their mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, wears. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. And um, also, there is a musician coming who they are looking forward to. Yes, I forgot his name. Bonaboy. Anybody remember the name? Of, what Bonaboy. is his name? Boy. Who boy now? Bonaboy. Bonaboy? Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, yes, I saw I saw his um his picture and so on. Was it um the Minister Kojo was Shamfa Kojo was next to him or something like that? I had a picture in the papers and he had on a, a polka dot shirt or something to that effect. Yeah. So you're looking forward to it then. Grand. Well, knock on wood, if you see me over there, well I'll shout you out and say hello. <laughs> Thanks very much, Hannah. All right, yeah, so who's okay. next? Um, Hadia went already. Uh, Hannah Hazel. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Dr. Campbell. My name is Hazel Michaeline Salvon. I live at Maraca St. Joseph. I feel the thing to do is make money, sleep, and dance and listen to music. What are you saying? What kind of dance you like to do? Uh, so anything. Anything once the music starts. Once the music starts, is put you in your zone. Yes, especially most likely, I should say, West Village, African music. Yeah. You could do the Joropo? I believe I could if I That's could. You're, you're, you're familiar with the Joropo? That's the one where, you know, yeah. it's like you go flat, well, you from a standing position, like you squat and you kick out oh, one really? foot. And you kick out one foot and you. And then, you, the yeah, then you stand back, you know? One foot yes. and the, that is that is not only is that leg strength, but it's very good coordination. I remember my, watching my sisters do that when they were younger. But um, yeah, that is great, man. Have you ever been in the Prime Minister's Best Village competition? So dancing for certain groups, yes, but not what you're saying. Yes. That is great, man. That is great. Well yeah. done, well done. Well, you keep it up. Thanks very yeah. much. All right, so who's next, Junior? As I said, if you're, if you're not inclined to speak, you can just type something in the chat. that will be fine. Oh, logged in as junior. Okay, no problem. Unable to hear what's going on. No problem. So we'll move on. That's okay. All right, Kaylee. Hi, good morning, Sue. Good morning, everyone. Somebody was logged on My name as is junior. Kaylee Gassi. I'm yeah. from San Grande. Um, I like to sleep but watch football and listen music <laughs> what you're saying in terms of watch football any particular team you follow anything like that 
What about no, for the World Cup? Just like the sport itself. Oh, just like it. You're looking forward to the World Cup that is coming up in about yes. a month and a half time. Any particular team you're back in? Brazil, no. Brazil. <laughs> okay, all right, yeah. Brazil seem to be doing very well. All the forwards clicking, and so they might be among the favorites. But you know how it goes. It's all about who shows up on the day. Did you play any sports while you were in school? Yes, I did. I played, well, football. What you say? What you boating. say? And what's that now? Dragon boating? Yeah. What you saying? In terms of football, what position you played? Um, wing or striker? What you saying? You have two feet? <laughs> I don't know, that's such a question, but... <laughs> oh, oh, no, from a footballing perspective, when somebody asks if you have to, it means if you could kick with both feet now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. sometimes when I ask people that, they say, what kind of question is that? Of course, you know, <laughs> I'd be like, no, what else? <laughs> but yeah, what's your favorite foot, right or left? Right. Right. But hey, I am mad at here because, you know, sometimes when you just have one foot, you just do everything with it. What comes yeah. to mind, one person I always like remember fondly is, of course, Diego Maradona, God rest his soul, left footed. And <laughs> everybody knew he was left footed. He didn't use to use the right at all. The right was like a walking stick. Very, very infrequently would use it. But just the left was so good, you know? So whereas having two feet does have its advantages, A, if you develop the skill enough on one foot, yeah, you could do it all. <laughs> all right. That's my leisure right. time, I play instruments. What instrument do you play, if I might ask? Um, I, I range from pan, a guitar. What you saying? Um, well, I am so impressed because I find, I remember back in my school days, um, you know, the arranger, I just always thought that was just so amazing how they could just, okay, you have, you have the calypso in your head, and he would come around and just show the different, um, you know, sections what to play. And then at the end of it all, it would just magically come together. Fascinating. <laughs> so is that how, you, in terms of arranging, do you, that's how you do it? Or do you write down the music? How do you do your arranging? Um, well, I do have a musical air, so yes, mm -hmm. just by hearing a song, I can... Think about what it sounds like it. in Pan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. That is, you're truly blessed in that regard. That's a true, true talent you have there. Thank you. All right. Keep it up. Thanks for sharing. All right. So who is next? Um, let me see. Hazel went already. Jadel. Good morning, so sorry. I forgot to change the name. That's my daughter's name. This is my name is CJ Felix. I'm from Sangha Grandi. Um, I was in your last lab class. Um, I like baking and cooking for my family. <laughs> ah, bacon, bacon. Talk to me about bacon. What is the most important thing to be a successful baker so that all your pastries and cakes come out well? Um, I believe it um, has to do with the hand, knowing how to knead the flour. Mm. Depends on what it is you're baking. Mm. You know, the flour to be at a certain texture can be too hard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, I hear you. Etc. So yeah, it's all in the in the hand. It's all and in the field there. Yes. I got you. All right. Thanks for sharing. Thanks very much. You're welcome. All I'll right. change your name just now. No, that's okay. That's fine. Um, all right. So let's see who's next. Um, let me see. Kaylee went. Junior Kaylee went. Curleen. I was Curleen Wade. Lita or Lita Wallace. Yeah, morning, sir. Uh huh. Good morning. Morning, class. My name is Lita Wallace. Um, from Tobago. I am. I love singing, and I'm into animal husbandry. What you saying? So, what type of animals you raising? Let me hear you. So boilers, boilers, layers. Oh. I have sheep. Okay. We have rabbit on this plant garden. Uh -huh. Now, do you have garden or garden? Garden. <laughs> garden.
Yeah, that is very interesting. And um, in terms of raising the animals, anybody ever wonder, you know, how on the hour you'll hear them crow? Anybody ever wonder how, how animals do that? Like fowls, how do they do it? How do they know? The roosters, how do they know to cook, you know, to crow five o'clock, four o'clock? Particularly for persons who raise, um, you know, chickens, you'll, you know that. Anybody ever have an idea how they do it? You ever see a fowl with a watch? So it's basically um, it's instinct. Instinct. Bacteria. Yes, yes, it's instinct, right? So they just know. But from a biologic, from a biology, biological perspective, then, do we have a clock? Do we have an internal clock? Yes, sir. Right, and and what is that internal clock? The circadian rhythm. Circadian rhythms, right? And what part of the brain controls that? We got to know this one and all. It's a gland beginning with P. Penal, penal, penal. Oh, it don't make sense. I teach. I might as well go <laughs> home. Excellent. The penal, or some people say the pineal gland, and that's it. That's it's a regulator, and so which is so incredible. But we do have an internal clock. We'll speak more to that when we later on in the semester. But same thing with those, um, you know, same thing with those animals. They're able. That's how they're able to tell time. So if anybody ever asks you, do fowls have watch? You say no. Fowls don't have watches. They have pineal glands. Very good. All right, so who was that one who just went there? That was Miss Wade? Yes, sir. All right, so let's see who's next. Oh, sorry, Lita. Sorry, Lita Wallace just went. Lukisha? Oh, Miss Wade, you went already? Yes? Yeah. Right. Like so if I was Jeopardy. That's right. So, Lukisha, go ahead. Yes, sir. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, yeah, my name is Lukisha Latillery. I am 31 years of age. I live in the beautiful countryside of Blantishes. My favorite hobby is fishing. I like to fish. Yeah, that's my favorite. The, the favorite thing I do, I love to fish. How do you fish? Do you fish from a boat, from the shore? Yes, I have I a pirog. Pirog, 20. I have a 28 foot I own. And you know what, on my spare time, yes, I also have a small business. I do like fish tours. I do go to Safaria Bay, Matlab, Takarib, all these places. So I enjoy fishing. The type of fishing I love is um, trolling. I like trolling. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Is that no, it's a type of fishing you use with um, with uh, so you have a uh, you go out there and you fish, you throw with your hands. It's a is a is a task. It's a real task. So you have to be strong to like pull the pull those wire, and you have to keep pulling that wire until you hold a fish. So it's a task. No wonder why you see the fishermen with their muscular self. It's a it's a real task, you know. I so I enjoy fishing. Yes. That is really good, man. What I want to, we, we need to, to form a website where we pop all the businesses of people in Costa Rica. Yes. It's, it's very impressive. That is very yeah. good. All right. Thanks very <laughs> much for sharing. Yeah. All right. all right. So I was in your class, um, instructor and function one as well. Eh? But, the, uh, yeah, yeah. I recognize the voice and the name. Yes. Thank yes. <laughs> all right. Thanks very much. Yeah, no problem. All right. So who's next? Um, Mariah, Mariah, went, oh yeah, Mariah went already, Mariah Gomez. Mira? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm from California, and my name is Mira Primnat. Um, My favorite thing, I would say, is quality family time and shopping. What do you say in terms of shopping? Where you like to shop? You like to shoes, shop in the malls, to buy online? Shoes. Um, I would say anywhere to be honest. Mm -hmm. Really, don't really have a fancy. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> Ma, that your that is very good. I myself has enjoyed a little shopping quite so. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. Thanks very much. All right. So who's next? Michelle. All right. Michelle might be having a little trouble with her setup. Not an issue. Rosa. All right, Rosa might be having a little trouble as well. Shania. 
Hi everyone, good morning. My name is Shania Wynn. I am from Port of Spain. Uh, hmm, something I like doing. I really enjoy baking. Even though I'm not that good at it, I like it. Ah, so, so where um, where you like to bake? Anything in particular? I know you're not good at it. What about um, a macaroni pie? I like to bake. I, like, I just like to bake. I like to bake everything. Even if it's not coming out good, I like to do it. I hear you. I hear you. Well, that is good. That is good. And you find you have sweet tan? Yes. Great, great, great. Because it has some people, you know, even though they, they keep trying, trying, it's boo. So it's always good to have sweet tan. I make it all much more better. Thanks for sharing. All right. So let me see. Uh, last person, Shamika. Good morning, so good, good morning, morning everyone. My name is Shimika Sylvester. I am from Point Fortin. Um, I like to play football and I like being outdoors. Outdoors in terms of I only like waterfalls. Mm, what you saying? Um, what which what, which waterfall have you gone to that you find the most impressive? Um, the Maracas waterfall. That mm. was the best waterfall ever. Um, yeah. The whole time I was there, I was wondering, like, where the water coming from? <laughs> Quite so, where the water has come from, I tell you. You know, and it's never stopped. But like, except during the dry season, it might slow down and so on. Yes. Quite so. That's very good. All right, Shamika, thanks very much. All right, so did we miss out on anyone? Um, anybody else? Hi, good morning. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I'm logged in as junior. I'm John. Yes, that's okay. Go ahead. Hi. Um, I'm from El Dorado. Um, most of my time has spent in doing different jobs, but what I like is um baking on a sunny day and baking bread particularly, not any other thing. Baking bread on a sunny day and. I like to see how around a home look when somebody uses a hoe. I think that's just it with about me. So when they plant in garden around it, that's what you're saying. You like to see how it looks. Uh, yeah, 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 it really does look pretty when they plant in garden. Quite so, quite so. Yeah, yeah. showing me back to my days. Um, I tell you about my grandfather planting garden. True story. One time, my, my, my brother went with my father to dig. Is it Topi Tambo or Tipi Tambo? What's the correct pronunciation? I always got it mixed up. It's tipi tambu. Tipi tambu. So they went to dig tipi tambu. So you know, he's had to use a fork and they dig in a big the soil. The soil was kind of clay, so it dry and crumbly. And like my brother lost focus for a little bit and he pushed the fork straight through his big toe <laughs> and he pulled it right back out, <laughs> needless to say. And he hopped hop to the hospital. Well, my, my grandfather and my father, you know, they put him in a car. He was around probably about 12, 13, so. But nothing long term. Of course, they just came the wound, gave some painkillers and so on. But no long term effect. Toenail good, good, you know, to this day. But every time you know, I think about Gyan, I remember that little thing. So the long story is always be careful when you begin tippy tambo and always look down and see where your toe is. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. All right, did we miss anybody else? So I answered the curling way here. Yes. I answered the security and with them thing, but I was missed. I was going to just go under the radar because everybody's song is so interesting. And every time these things come up, it has hit me that I am not interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <It's> serious, <laughs> but my name is, my name is Curleen Wade. Um, mm -hmm. I'm from the Princess Town area. I work with you already. Mm -hmm. This is why I'm back in your class. Sir. I deliberately took your class again for two. Yes. yes. For those who are new. This was one of the most interesting parts of my life last semester, working what? with Mr. Dr. Campbell. What you saying? Um, yes, sir. Um, let me see. Yeah, so I work to pay for my students, and it, I tell you, I just be confused because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. everybody loves baking and all these kind of things. I am very friendly, but I'm a solitary creature, so 
Hey, hey, that's your special that. talent. Well, that's your special yeah. talent. Because, <laughs> in fact, that means you have peace with yourself. You know, you have a lot of people who don't have peace with themselves. They're frightened of their own self. So they always <laughs> have to be doing things. So the fact that, you know, you, you, you have peace with yourself, that's a great thing. I am yeah. out of change in that regard. So I'm social about guys, but once I'm in my own little world, I'm okay with being by myself. Mm. And that's it. Nice to meet all of you. And you guys sound like a very interesting bunch. Okay, great. In that regard, thanks very much. All right. So anybody else? Did I miss anybody? Yes, sir. Me, sir. Go ahead. Go I, ahead. Got, I got bumped out. Go ahead. Go second. ahead. Um, my name is Trinelle Adams. I'm from Central, going South Campus. And I like to dance and spend time with my family. What you saying? We have dancers and so on. We could put a little concert, man. Nice one. Yes, sir. And you like to spend time with your family. That's a very good thing. Because now everybody is going good with their family. When you have them, you know, around too much, you know, it's cause conflict and so on. So it's good to see that you get along good with them. All right. Thanks, Janelle. Anybody else? Did we miss anyone? All right. It seemed like we get we got everybody then. That is good. So let me see. Maybe now is a good time to take to take roll then roll call as they say. Okay. Let's see if we could do roll call really quick and then move on. Mm -hmm. So let me see. I'm trying a new thing here. So let me see how this works out. Come on, come on. All right. Uh, all right, let's see how this works. All right, and not <laughs> it was this this thing. Um, it worked when I was 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 trying it out, but not working now. So I'll just call rule manually, as it were, and then we proceed. All right. So, um, official. Yes, Mm hmm. Let me see attendance. All right. Afisha, Alana. Alana. Present, sir. Uh huh. Allison. Oreen. Well, I see Oreen. I got you there, Oreen. Um, Bose. I see. I got you, Bose. Brenton. Brenton. I got you there. See you there, CJ. Got you, CJ. Crystal. I take it off. Of Crystal, I got you there, Crystal. Danelle. Danelle Nanan. Not seeing her. Eliza or Elisa. Yeah, got you. Fiona, got you. Frida, got you. Hadaya, got you. Hazel, got you. Kaffi. Gotcha. Kaylee. Gotcha. Colleen. Gotcha. Lita. Gotcha. Lucisha. Gotcha. Mariah. Gotcha. Mira. Gotcha. Ro Nikisha Thomas. Not seeing you there. Um, Michelle. Gotcha. Rosa. Gotcha. Shania, got you. Kaffee is present. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'll put your present, Kaffee. That's fine. So I got Shania. Oh, we have two Shania. Shania Ali. I'm not saying Shania Ali. We have Shania Wynn, yes. Shamika Sylvester, yes. Oh, yeah, Shayana Hussein. Chanel. 
All right, so persons who are not accounted for, let me see, Alison. Yeah. Alison, you're here? Are you there? No, no, no sir. Huh? No, this was Trina. So you said here, so right? Yeah, so I just call in the names of the persons who I, who I didn't have, not accounted for. So I have, let me, who I don't have accounted for, Alison. Alison Nikki. is here. Yeah. As Junior, I'm trying. Okay, no problem. Uh, That's fine. Um, Nikisha, Shania, and Shayana. Shania Ali, Nikisha Thomas, and Shana, Shayana Hussein. All right, if they happen to come, just give me an alert and we'll take it from there. All right, so, so for this class, what do you all want from the class? What do you all expect from the class? Let me hear you. So, well, I had you last semester and yes. I enjoy your method of teaching. So, I just want that to continue, of course, throughout. Um, I like the way that you give us questions, that are application questions and scenarios. So, instead of just giving it in any boring way, I should say, <laughs> I like yeah. the fact that you give us a little... Like how mm -hmm. you gave us the first assignment with the um soldiers and stuff yes. like that. Yes. Like I receive information better that way. That way. Okay. I'll try to keep it keep that up then, Crystal. Okay, great. Anything else? Any what any, anybody want in terms of from the class itself as me as lecturer? I hope for the same thing that happened last semester, so that I'm able to work with my group and your self-execute my work in a timely manner and continually be given the knowledge that I need to acquire for my skill, which is nursing, and to pass these exams. Great. Now, on that topic, <laughs> let me ask you a question. If you have somebody in your group for your project that is not pulling the weight, well, it's her weight because I don't think we have any meals this time around. If you have somebody not pulling, what, what should be done? Do you think that person should be penalized or do you think... She, she should get the same mark as the whole group. What do you all think? I should have throw up a, um, I should throw up a, a thing for, for you all to vote on that. So that's how. Um, I think the person should um, or can, they mm -hmm. are unable to pull the weight in the group. You give them something else different that they would pull the weight on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or because at the end of the day, they will get a mark and the group will get a mark. So everybody, the environment of itself will be happy. I got you. That makes sense. Uh, true, just to true. begin with, I think as adults, um, this is more or less adult learning. Yeah. So yeah, um, we should discuss it with the members first. We, everybody should know there are times when someone really isn't able to pull their weight, but if it's a customary thing, that is the problem. So that think, is the problem, yeah. I think what you're hinting at there, Kirlene, is communication is the key. Yeah, so yeah. If it is, you're fine, because quite rightly, you know, we all grown persons here, and we have different things doing and so on. So if you do find yourself in a position where things are happening, it's, it's really just to communicate the issue to the team members. By the same token as well, I think the, the team members should be accommodating in so far as is probably mm -hmm. possible. Of course, you want to go above and beyond. But, but you know, you should work but, together in that way. So communication is really important. Yeah, go ahead, Colleen. But, but for the record, sir, I've not experienced that much <laughs> last semester, mm -hmm. and I never mm -hmm. experienced it with this class. We had a thing going that you know, when even when I fell, the group was able to hold me up because they would have known that I was doing the mm -hmm, work mm -hmm, that was required mm -hmm, of me all the time. So mm -hmm. that is all it is. We don't, mm -hmm, something mm -hmm. stuff happen. But if it's a customary thing, then we'll probably have to communicate that to the members. Right. So, so that's yeah. important, you know, communicating with the members. Always remember that that's something that is important. So do remember that. And if it is you find that you're falling behind, some people are shy and maybe they feel intimidated by some of the members of the group, you know, only at that point do you communicate it to me. But you should always try to work it out within the confines of your group. And don't let me intervene in that regard. All right. 
So, but in terms of my requirements, there's three things really to take note of. One, grades are not given. You have to earn it, so you have to work. Second thing, no makeups, all right? So the way how the marks, if you look through the course guide, um, the way how the course is set up, it doesn't have one, you know, one assignment that is worth, let's say, 100%. I remember back in, back in the day, <laughs> you know, like, for instance, when you think back even to things like, well, no, common entrance or SES is now known. It's different because you have um, assignments during the course of the year. But back in my day, it was all or nothing. So all those years, you know, you know leading up to standard five and writing the exam was 100%. You just go write the exam and that's it. Right, but the way I was set up now, you know, you have marks which you attain all the way up to the final, including for the projects and different things is broken up. So if you miss an assignment, I am there will be none, no makeup, no makeup given the semester. All right, so please take note of that, and um, I'll be holding firm to that one. And the other thing I just ask you, please be reflect, respectful for both to both your colleagues and your lecturer. You know, there's some behaviors I'm sure you all could identify with it. Nobody is perfect. And during the course of your lifetime, you might, you could identify, let's say certain teachers you didn't like or certain attitudes that they had that you didn't like. Interestingly enough, you know, for those of us who did psych and so on, sometimes we mimic that which we don't like. So even within let's say the confines of your project group, you have certain things that you don't like. Well, don't, you know, repeat it there. You know, like bowling at people and things. You don't like to be bowled at, well, you don't shout at people and so on. So always remember to be respectful to your colleagues. These are the persons who you'll be working with in your professional career in a very short space of time. These said, said persons whom you relate with here, always remember that, all right? So do be respectful to them. Similarly, in terms of, to me, you might not like me, I am mad at you, right? But you have to be respectful to the fact that I am your lecturer. So if you do have an issue with me, I kindly ask that you, know, you contact me privately and speak to me there. Don't create a forum for it, you know, in front of the class because that it doesn't look good for either person involved and it's not a very good thing to do. So do keep that in mind. In terms of my contact information, this is it. Well, we already have the WhatsApp group going and that's probably the best place to catch me. Um, I will usually respond within the day. I'm very good at that because I check my WhatsApp regularly. So this is the best way to catch me. Other than that, yeah, you could use the email. Yeah, you could catch me on the e-classroom, but the WhatsApp group is really the best way to catch me. So we mentioned in terms of the class etiquette. Yes, when we go through lectures, you could raise your hand. Everybody know how to raise your hand in, in Zoom? Yes, sir. Yes, all right, let me see. All right, let me check. Everybody raise your hand. Let me see. Raise, raise your hand. Oh, let me see what person is. <laughs> all right. So how you do it? So explain to me how you just raise your hand. Good, good. I see hands going up. Somebody wants to describe how you raise your hand. The process involves because there might be some persons who actually don't know how to do it. Well, there's an icon at the bottom of the screen. Mm -hmm. See mirror where you see in participants chat share screen record and so on, you will see the icon mark reactions. Um, mm -hmm. You tap on that and you will see all the options, the raise hand, lower hands and so forth. Right, so just tap on it at the bottom of the screen and that's where, where it says reactions, all right? And that's how if, you get the hand up, yeah? If, if you're on your phone though, mm -hmm. like I am on now, you will see three little dots. Mm -hmm. Press the three little dots and ah. that, will, that will come up as... Ah. That will come up as one of the options for well, all those options. Well, thanks for sharing that with us. Yeah. You know, so, so there you, you live and you learn, right? So those on the phone, you know, just the three dots, just tap on it, and then you get those options. All right. Oh, Alana, go ahead. Or, or you're just raising your hand just to show that you're raising. Okay, good. All right. So very good in that regard. So do raise your hand when we go into the class. And of course, Try to respect your colleagues, don't over talk them, talk over them when they are speaking and always be respectful of what they say. You know, they might, some persons might be at a different point as it relates to biology than others. And you might find 
what somebody's saying is absolute rubbish, you know, in that regard, you know, and you might want to, please don't bring them down. That's the worst thing you could do. I remember, you know, when I was in school for physics, I remember it found in, in, in form three, my physics teacher, I was going to say something and he embarrassed me in front of the class. And I just never said anything again in physics. And I was so glad when, um, you know, to finish physics in form five. And that was the end of me on physics. So maybe we have my physics teacher to thank for turning me towards biology. Because when I went to A-levels, you know, I was like, no way I touch in physics, you know? I was so, I had such a negative, you know, perspective of it, right? So maybe you have to thank my physics teacher for me being in biology to this day. Right, I must bounce him up and tell him that if he's still around and not, we're still in the land that we're living, as they say, right? But always remember, don't it, don't try to do that. Um, by the same token, if ever you say something, I view whatever you say in biology as very important. If for some odd reason you say something during class and I laugh, I will give you a coupon for two hundred dollars to go to KFC to have lunch or dinner on me, right? Because it's not it's not correct for the lecturer, you know, to laugh at anybody. That's just totally wrong. So you could hold me to that. If you have, if ever you say something and you hear me bust out a laugh, well, you know, you're getting lunch or slash dinner on on so for that day. All right. So do remember that. Okay. Cell phone, well. Even in this environment that we have, the virtual environment, if you happen to get, of course, um, do come offline, you know, don't, don't be talking. Always be mindful of your mic, you know, where that is concerned. So these are your assessments. Assessment one will be on the 17th, sorry, the week of the 17th on Sunday, October the 23rd. All the assessments will be on Sunday. So assessment one is Sunday, October 23rd. Assessment two is Sunday, November the 20th. Your final exam period is the 4th to the 17th of Janu January. They haven't set the timetable yet, but one thing we could say for, with certainty is within this period, the 4th to the 7th of January. Of course, your project is due at midnight on December the 11th. But your both assessments will be on a Sunday, and um, it will be from 11 to 6 p.m. tentatively. But you'll have a, um, a window of opportunity to which you'll write it. The exam wouldn't be longer than 45 minutes than an hour, but um, you would have a window of time, a six to seven hour window in which you'll take it, but it will be on a Sunday. And the week of those assessments, you'll be given that day off so that you can actually revise, all right? So do take note for these two assessments. All right, any questions? For those who know in the WhatsApp group, there's a link in the chat, you know, to join the group. Any other questions? All right, so, so then- excuse. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, I can't recall if you said um, the exam, is it open from 11 to six for that day alone? For one day? Or is it for Sunday to Sunday? Okay, no, no. All right, good question. Um, so the exam itself, all the exams will be on Sundays. So it's two. You have assessment one and assessment two, right? They will be on a Sunday. Both of them, they'll be on a Sunday. There'll be a window. The window for it to be open, so the exam will be open. Let me, so the first one, let's say your first exam is on October the 17th. Sorry, October the 23rd. So on October, Sunday, October the 23rd, it will be open from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., all right? 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., that's the window in which it'll be open. The exam itself, haven't, it hasn't been finalized yet, but it will be between 45 to one hour. Let's just say for example sake, it's one hour long. So on Sunday, October the 23rd, the exam is one hour, but you'll be able to take that exam between the hours of 11 to 6 p.m. That is okay? Yes, sir. Okay. And similarly, for the second exam, which is on Sunday, November the 21st, same thing. It will be The exam will be open from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., but the exam itself will be one hour long. Okay? That's a good question. I will send you all a copy of this um, the PDF of this I file. 
Yes, I go think ahead. That, I think it's Sunday. Is it 20 or the 21st is a Monday? The 21st is a Monday of November. Of November. Right. Yes, it is. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yes, I'm watching it here. It is November the 20th. It is the week of November the 20th. Habit, yes. So it is like that on the um, on the PDF. I'll send it to you uh, when we finish today. All right. Any other questions? Nope. All right, then. Well, then let's look to go through. Let us go through um, the lectures. All right, so what have we looked at thus far? Well, three things today. This will be the third, the third um, thing. We looked at blood, heart, and of course, this week is blood vessels. All right, so blood. Tell me something important about blood. Now, all the lectures, um, the lectures themselves, they're posted. Anybody getting any difficulty in terms of locating them? Locating the lectures? Nope. All right, great. So the lectures are posted. You have the PowerPoints for the lecture. So you can actually go it over at your leisure in that regard. So what we'll be doing here, we'll just be talking around the topic and then we'll be looking at some of those worksheets. Now with the worksheet, let me ask you this logistically, because these, the, for the lecture, they don't count for marks. Would it be easier if you submitted the worksheets individually or is it okay to keep it with the group for the worksheets for this one? Because for the lab, definitely those count. So that has to be a group. Which one is currently, which one is really easier for you? Thanks, Senator. Well, I think I look at it. Yeah, okay, true. Um, so for the lecture, you just have to submit something, yes? A worksheet? Yeah. Right. So currently you have to do it um, belonging to a group. Is that working out okay for everybody in terms of submitting it? You're having... Yes, sir. Okay, yeah, fine. Yes, sir. We leave it just like that. All yeah, right. that's what I'm Okay, great. We leave it just like that. All right. Okay. So let me see if I can just pull up the. Okay, let's have a look at Okay. Everybody seeing the sheet the screen? The course? course. Yeah. Yes. Right. Sir. Okay, great. All right. So last week, well, the first week you would have looked at blood. All right, so blood. Blood is important. Yes. Yes. yes, that was a that was a facetious statement. <laughs> yes, it is important. Why is it important? What does blood do? Tell me some of the functions of blood. Let me hear you. It transports our nutrients to the different parts of this body. Nutrients. nutrients. Okay, right. So we mentioned nutrients there. What is the main yeah. nutrient that the blood transports in the body? Oxygen. 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 Right. Oxygen. Why do we need oxygen for? Proper cell function. Proper cell function, that is true. It could be a little more specific. What, in the cell, how does the cell use oxygen? What does it use oxygen for? One, something very specific it uses the oxygen for. And there's an equation. I, I want to say to create energy. Eh? Yes, and but you're I right, Colleen. No, no, yeah, that, that's exactly <laughs> it. it. In the cell, why the but... oxygen is used yeah, it, that's what it does. It breaks down food. So the oxygen is used to break down food to create energy. And in the body, energy is in the form of three letters. What are those three letters? ATP. Universal ATP. currency. ATP. ATP, right? Where Native American Indians live in. What do they live in? 
ATP, right? If you look at reservations according to traditional, in terms of traditional housing, right? So ATP, and what does ATP stand for? Adenosine, adenosine triphosphate. Yeah, adenosine triphosphate. Why do they say triphosphate? So how many phosphates are present is attached to the adenosine molecule? Three. Three. Three, yeah. And when you break off one of those phosphates, what is released? So when adenosine triphosphate goes to adenosine diphosphate, which is two, what is released? What do you think is released when you break that bond? I wonder if it's something, if it's something to do with pyruvate or uh, just now, I, see, I think in terms of the Krebs cycle. No, correct. Just, but uh, yeah, you have to shift your mind to chemistry <laughs> now. When you break uh, a bond, what do you release? <laughs> yes, yes. You're going a acid, little far. Um, not acid. Um... All right, let me, let me ask another question. ATP, what do you need ATP for? To create energy. Yeah. So when you break the, the bonds, that's actually what you release. You're releasing energy. energy. And the energy is yeah, that's bond energy. That's what I say. So it's bond energy, and you have to break it to actually release that energy. Right? So you store it. The energy is stored, just like Duracell batteries. Yeah? But they're the bonds. It's stored in the bonds. So when you break the bond, you release the energy. Right, so that is very important. But the oxygen is used uh, in the cell in the process of glycolysis. When you think about glycolysis, as the name implies, glyco referring really to sugars, right? Glycogen is a type of sugar stored in the liver primarily. And then you have lysis means to cut. So glycolysis is a process within the cell in which sugar molecules are broken down by a series of reactions to ultimately glucose to glucose 6, to fructose 6, fructose 1, 6, ultimately to pyruvate, right? And that process of breaking it down is known as glycolysis. You're breaking down the sugar. Then pyruvate, of course, enters the um, TCA cycle and its products are then shuttled to the mitochondria where more ATP is generated. So ultimately, glucose is broken down at the level of the cell to generate energy, but it needs oxygen to do it. And that is the critical reason why we breathe in oxygen. Yes, we take it into our nose, right? Goes down the respiratory tract to our lungs. And we look at more of that when we look at respiration. It goes to the lungs and then tissue, it gets into the tissue. But to get there, of course, it has to diffuse into, well, it goes to the alveoli, it diffuses into the bloodstream, and then it actually gets uh, taken to the cell. And it's only at the level of the cell, you have this breakdown of the sugars, glycolysis, right? Very important. What happens if the sugars, which are present in the blood, so when you eat a meal, yum, 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 of course, you know, around the stomach, you have um, lots of blood vessels, which is why, you know, what the old people say for those from a friend who like to go Maracas waterfall, is it, a, oh, those who like to go by the beach, um, those who live Blanche says, and so on, 2.14, is it a good idea to go in the water after you eat a meal, eat a heavy meal? And if, if not, why, why is that a good idea to go in water? Let me ask that question. The answer is no. Why is it not a good idea? After you eat something heavy, why is not a good idea? Now, you feel free to put it in the chat as well. Huh? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So, so is it because um, the, blood that, the blood that was supposed to be helping the stomach will go towards the arms and the legs? Yeah. And will cause cramps? Yeah. So remember, when you're digesting, the blood is now, because you're eating food, um, the nutrients have to be absorbed. So it pulls around your stomach. So the blood that is usually in your extremities, your fingers, your arms, your legs, right, is taken up in that regard. So yes. So they have less blood available for muscle contraction. Another important thing for muscle contraction, which is um, you do need oxygen for muscle contraction as well. And therefore, the probability of you getting cramp increases you know, if you happen to uh, eat a heavy meal. Now, of course, there are other factors, especially related to genetics. Some people are just, you know, they could do anything. I remember my sister had a friend, right? And she was thin as a whip. I mean, she could stand up behind a lamppost and she will disappear. 
right? And she could eat. She will eat any and everything and nothing, <laughs> no weight, but the Lord, no weight. And this is all through high school and so on. When she, she eventually got married and after her first child, when she had her first child, she just put on the weight and just never took it back off, you know? So to this day, you know, she's a little bit on the on the plump side, but she never returned <laughs> to that side where she could, you know, hide behind a lamppost just by standing up, you know. So genetics play a lot of a lot into that. So blood carrying oxygen, major function. That oxygen goes to the tissues and then it goes to the cells. And in the cell, you have that process of glycolysis, breaking down of sugars to generate ATP. And that is very critical. That happens at the level of the cell. And for that to occur, you need the oxygen because that oxygen ultimately becomes the electron acceptor for the mitochondria, right? When the products of pyruvate going through the TCA cycle, the shuttle across the mitochondria. So all that being said, oxygen, very important for energy generation at the level of the cell. Let's talk a little bit more about blood now. Fluid component of blood, all right? So transportation, you mentioned that. Defense, how does your blood help in, in defending against infection? What type of blood cells those are? White blood cells. White blood cells, yeah. And where do you find the white blood cells? Where do they, where you usually find them? Where, where do they usually chill out in your body? Hmm. Well, yes, okay, you, you could argue that they're all through your circulatory system, granted. But they're in particular, they're, they're usually located in a certain part. And you can tell if you are if your body is fighting an infection because when you go to the doctor, he or she will palpate that area. They feel on your neck, and what they are feeling for is the accumulation. In particular, I don't want to say the word because if I tell you the word, you'll know exactly what I say. So when you go to the doctor, your lymph nodes, yes. So all that being said, the lymphatic system, right? That's the repository for your white blood cells, right? Within your lymphatics. And on the topic of lymphatic, I'll just let's mention one other thing. Now the lymphatics, they're very good in terms of transportation. Well, they transport the white blood cells, the cells of the immune system. They also transport fats in your lymphatics, your lacteals, right? Which is within the lymphatic. Why is it, do you think fats travel to your lymphatic as opposed to your normal capillaries, let's say. One word, it's four letters, it begins with S, and it has the same thing, same reason why when you go to a shop, uh, you have a friend there who like, who like shoes. When you go for a shoe, why would you change a shoe? Because of what? If somebody brings a shoe for you, you, you try it on and say, now nah, I want another one. Why would you change it? Because of the size. Yeah, Small. correct. Small. Because of the size. So when you think about fats, fats are very big in terms of the molecule, right? It's a big molecule when you look at it structurally. So the thing is they run the risk of actually clogging up the capillaries. So what do they do? They go through the lymphatics. And that is why when you think about it with lacteals and your lymphatic system, that is why fats prefer to go through there and they do. They travel through the lymphatics. And um, that's the reason why, because they're big. And they're, if they run through the capillaries, they run the risk of clogging it up. So your body, that fantastic machine, right? It guides it through the lymphatics in that regard, okay? So we mentioned transport, defense, maintenance of homeostasis. How does your blood help maintain homeostasis? What is your internal core temperature? 35, 36. 35 to 36 degrees, right? And why is it that your internal core temperature has to be 35 to 36 um, degrees around that, that temperature. There's a specific reason because at that temperature, something, there's something in your body. I don't wanna give you too much gravy on the rice. Something happens that, you know, you need that particular temperature. It's a word that begins with R, nine letters and ends in S. Reaction? Reactions, yeah, very good. So this whole notion of metabolism, 
right? All the collectively, all the reactions that occur in the body to maintain health and wellness. Critical. All those reactions, chemical reactions. Let's look at it from the level of the cell. When you look at a cell, of course, the cell, is a cell dry or is it quote unquote wet? Wet. Wet. Wet, right? <laughs> you have the cytoplasm. That's it. <laughs> right? It has a cytoplasm and the cytoplasm is fluid, right? It has fluid. So the cytosol, uh, what's the difference between cytosol and cytoplasm? Anybody? There's a difference between the two. Cyto you often hear the term cytosol and you might hear the word cytoplasm. What's the difference? So the cytosol plus all your organelles within the cell gives you a cytoplasm. So therefore all the cell contents is known as the cytoplasm, but the liquid part specifically is known as the cytosol. That's just the liquid part alone without any organelles. Now, the reason why you have a liquid portion, why the cell is wet or has that liquid is because these reactions, they need to take place in an aquatic or a liquid environment. If you remove the liquid, what will happen? If you dry out a cell, well, dot, 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 the cell will die. Die. Yeah. And the reason why it dies is because these reactions, these metabolic reactions, they no longer occur. Right. We mentioned one of the metabolic reactions just now, glycolysis, breakdown of sugars. That needs to occur in liquids. So liquids are very critical to your body, which is why you need to maintain, you know, your liquid environment, drink your water, drink your, eat your food, because you also get liquid from there as well. But you need to keep it up um, or, or else you, you run the risk of those reactions shutting down. And if at a level, if the cells begin to shut down, what does that affect? The tissues, if the tissues begin to shut down, it affects the organs. If the organs begin to shut down, well, all your organ system will begin to shut down. And if all the organ systems begin to shut down, what happens next, dot, 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 dot? The organism dies. You'll be speaking with your ancestors, right? <laughs> so it's a very neat progression that actually starts at the level of the cell. So it's always important then to keep that cell moisture, that is very important. Why? Because you have those reactions, they need that moist environment to take place. Maintenance of homeostasis. So the blood, very important for keeping that temperature up. Not only do you need a liquid environment, but those reactions, they need a particular temperature for them to happen or for them to do their functions optimally. What do we mean by that? Think about, Everybody, you know, when you go to Costat, let's say, or anywhere in a classroom, when you go into a classroom, what do you expect to see? What are some of the things you expect to see when you go into a classroom? Lecturer. The lecturer. Well, so when you go in here, stand up and watch the lecturer. Yes, table. The table, chairs, a right, a board, a, a projector, right? Clean environment, you know? So there are certain things. Now, what would happen if you go into a classroom and it have none of those things, you know? Could the lecturer still come in and lecture? Yeah, but it'll be difficult for you to learn, right? It'll be different, it'll be challenging. And some people might just be like, you know what, this ain't happening and just leave. In a similar, by a similar measure, in your body, when it doesn't have optimal conditions, it will not perform well. So that temperature for those reactions to occur, yes, some of them might still occur if the temperature changes, but it wouldn't happen very well. And of course, when you get way outside that temperature range, it's a very big problem, right? And when your body, how does your body, or let me ask this question, why does your body raise the temperature above its normal range? above that core temperature. Why would it do that? Or when would it do it? In, in case of infection. infection. Yeah. And how, how does, okay, how does raising temperature, how does that affect infection? There are so certain, at, um, really there's yeah. certain, one yeah. Word, certain. One word in particular, there's a, um, a class of food that's affected by temperature. Bacteria. Well, yes, bacteria is a type of organism so, that so, is true. So, uh, it begins so with P. Into? It begins with P, a class of food associated with meat. It begins with so, P. Protein. Protein. Protein, Proteins. yes. Parasites, the majority of parasites. And in fact, when you look at organisms in general, and I think that's where you all were hinting at, 
you're thinking about structural proteins that make them up and you're quite right in that regard. But the thing is, proteins have a primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary structure. When you heat them up, you change the structure. And one of the things that is closely correlated with proteins is structure and function, just like the name of this course, structure and function. When we talk about structure and function, what two biological or uh, biological terms are referring to? Structure and function, anatomy and anatomy physiology, and physiology, right? And physiology. When you change the temperature as it relates to proteins, you change their function. Yeah, which is why, of course, you know, when you have um, somebody mention, you know, in terms of animal husbandry, when you have an old fowl, what you do to, to eat, you know, and you, well, things tight, so you had a nice Sunday lunch. And it's only after eating, you realize an old fowl, right? What you do to him? To get it soft, what you have to do? Hey, pressure. You put some pressure on him, right? Temperature, you change the temperature. <laughs> Under yeah. high temperature, what do you do? You change the structure of the meat. Yeah. So it moved from being tringum to soft, soft, right? It got very soft. Again, you're breaking bonds, rearranging the bonds and structure and function. You change the structure of it, right? And heat is needed in that regard. Temperature change could change the structure, all right? So proteins in particular, very heat sensitive. So when you are sick, what happens? What do you, And let's say you have these different viruses or bacteria in your body, what does your body do? It raises the temperature to do two things. One, structurally is looking to change the, well, not only the structural proteins of the bacteria, but those reactions that occur within the uh, cytoplasm itself, those metabolic reactions. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, um, I'll just push the button there. You all hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay, right. So looking at blood, blood types. So what are the different blood types? The ABO and the RH factor. Right, the recess factor, very good. So we're looking at the ABO blood type. You'll see in the, the screen? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. There's one, there's one image which I like um, to refer to as it relates to blood typing. Did you all play the blood typing game? Were you all able to do it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll try something. And was it good? <laughs> was it all good? Yes. yes, it was. All right. So we will have a look at that shortly. All right. So in terms of... In terms of the blood grouping type, So who could give to whom as it relates to blood? Let's see my favorite little chart. Who can give to anyone? So O is known as the? Universal donor. And which one is the universal recipient? AB. AB. AB is the universal recipient. All right, so O is the donor, AB is the universal recipient. I'm not seeing. Ah, this is it. 
here. I find this is the, of course, um, persons will have different ways of remembering it. But I find this is the, um, the easiest way, way to remember it. So when you're writing it out, you, you start from left to right and you start writing A. Well, of course, we, we write from left to right, you know, A and then B. So you write the letter A, write letter B. And of course, between them, you put AB. And we know it's the ABO system. So therefore, O has to go on top. You all are seeing the screen? Where you yes, can see the blood yes, transfusion? Yes, all right. I know. Is that coming up? Right, so I find this is the easiest way. So A, B, you just write it A, B. You put A, B at the bottom and O at the top. And all the arrows go down. So there's the cool thing. So therefore, what, what does that mean? Well, O could give to A, O could give to B, O could give to A, B, B. You know, it tells you the direction and of course self. A, B could give to itself. This could give to itself. This could give to itself and so on. Right? So one of the advantages of that, let's see if we could do this based on that. All right, everybody seeing it? Yes, sir. Okay, let's give it a go. So again, back to this thing. Here it is here, you know, O. And it's very nice. And the, just one other thing, in terms of recess factor, right, NP, you know, think about the, you know, gas. I know gas is on everybody's mind these days. So after you draw this, let's put N and P. N for negative and P positive. N could go to P, but P cannot go to N. And that's all you need to know about blood typing. All right, the, just these two diagrams and you'll have a down path. All right, N remember, always remember negative could go to positive, but positive cannot go to negative. Okay, let's, let's see if this will work here. All right, the patient need been in an accident and needs a transfusion. All right, so you take the needle. I right, take the blood next. Now, there's a agglutination type reaction. When you put it in these solutions, agglutination it means this clumping. It's just a, a fancy word for it. And when it it tells you what is actually present. All right, so based on that, anybody wants to guess? So there's the recess factor. What is this blood type here? So this, this means then that B is not present. We have A and we have the recess factor. So what, what will it be? Would it be A positive, right? Because A, we see here, A gives a reaction and the recess factor. This is the positive or the negative. So if you see this at the bottom, it means it's positive. If you see nothing like this, it means it's negative. With this one, if you see this little clump at the bottom with the A, so they put a solution in here. If you see it, clumps, that means A is present. But if you don't see it, that is like it just remains red. That means it's negative, all right? So we're looking at A positive. Let's go. 
So we know that now it's A positive. So what kind of blood? So this person is A positive. What kind of blood could, could they receive? O positive. All right, so let's look at this there. So your A. Now remember, with positive, positive could only receive, well, negative to positive, right? So you could give negative to positive and positive could receive from itself. All right, so what is that O? O positive. Sorry, O positive. That's, right, so O positive. And what else? The A. Somebody said O negative initially. Right? Where O negative? A positive. I'm not saying O negative. I'm saying O positive. Oh, so o a negative. Positive. Sorry, you said A positive, you said, okay. A positive, right? And it, because this person, this person here is A positive, right? So therefore, of course, they could get it. So you save the patient with blood type A positive. So when you get the time, have a look at this screen, right? And just keep in mind, if you're in terms of the blood type, draw it up like this. Remember when you're writing it down on your page, A, B, A, B at the bottom or at the top, and draw the arrows, bam, bam, bam. And this means O could give to B. It gives you the direction which they could give. And of course, each one is self, could give to self. And also remember NP, negative could give to positive, but positive cannot give to negative. All right, so when you have time, have a look at that. Very good. Okay, All right? The blood types and the need for matching to facilitate transfusion. So that would have been the first, first week. Heart. Is your heart imp important? Most definitely. <laughs> yes, some yes. people, they say some people don't have a heart, that some people have a big stone in the chest. Not so? That's not true for this, for this, for this class at all. Why is it that a lot of these songs, you know, love, love songs or so on, that we talk about heart? Anybody knows, you know? Don't go breaking my heart. I love you with all my heart. Why do they always put this emphasis on heart as related to love and emotion? Anybody knows why? Because, because of how important it is. Yeah. And it can be easily broken. Yeah, well, at one time, Believe it. Well, we know now, of course, in terms of the seat of consciousness, it lies within the brain. But at one time, they actually did think it was the heart, right? So which is why, for instance, when you look at old um, artwork and so on, particularly those of the, from the Christian Catholic persuasion, you know, you, you see things like the sacred heart of Jesus, you know, and you see the heart, you know, have mercy on us. It's all about emotion and love and so on, because it was actually belief that these things resided in the heart. They, they really believed that. It wasn't until the really the, um, evol the uh, coming of age of neuroscience towards the end of the 19th century, early 20th, did they really appreciate that the brain was the seat of emotion. But then they didn't go back and change the songs. And the songs would sound kind of funny, eh? You know, do go break in my cerebellum. That doesn't sound as good as the go break in my heart. So they just left it as it was. Yeah. <laughs> right? But at one time, they did think the heart was the seat of emotion. That's why all of these love songs, when you think about candy for Valentine's Day, you know, everything is this heart, heart, heart-shaped things and so on. Because it was believed that is where it, it's, um, it resided. All right. So the heart, location and position. Where would you find the heart? Left side or the right side of your body? In the mediastinum. From, so in the mediastinum, the, well, the mediastinum really refers to the area between the lungs. So which area? More on the left, or let, let, me, let me be very specific, in terms of the midline, to the left or the right of the midline, within the mediastinum, you're quite right. Um, the left or the right of the midline? The left, sir. The left. So using your sternum as the midline, it'll be to the left. Could you have your heart on the right, on the right side? Thank you. 
Guys, in a condition yeah. known as dextrocardia, very, very rare, but it could occur. Yeah, it could occur. It is consistent with life, but very, very rare. I've never seen it in my professional career. It doesn't mean that, but it, it is consistent with like dextrocardia, having it on the right side. Based on that, what organ would you find immediately behind the heart? The heart sits on what organ? On top of which organ? There are two of them. The lungs. The lungs. And by extension, which lung do you think is bigger because of the presence of the heart? The left lung or the right lung? Which one bigger? Right. The right, yeah. Because on the left side, you have your heart. So therefore, to accommodate the heart, the left lung actually has this depression. So it's actually smaller, your left heart, than the right heart. So which lung do you think gets more infection, your left lung or your right lung? That was a good guess, yeah. But it's actually a right. And it has to do, it all depends on your logic trail. I could see where you were going with it in terms of your left. And not only logic trail, it also has to do with the trachea, anatomically speaking, right? It bifurcates to the right in terms of the, when you're looking at your trachea, it turns, it, it goes to the right first. And, is a, and since the right lung is bigger, most of the air would go in there first than to the left side. And that's, that's, just how, it's just, that's how we built. And it has to do with the size of the lung anatomically. So because it's bigger, and because the split from the trachea, it goes first to the right. It splits off and goes to the right before it goes to the left. So therefore more air goes in there. So therefore when you're looking at infections, more infections actually occur in your right lung. They appear more in your right than in your left lung. We look more at that in respiration. So have no fear. Let's continue with this, right? Position of the heart within the mediastinum. The mediastinum is that space between the lungs and in terms of the location of the heart, it's to the left of the midline. What is the point of the heart called? The tip of the heart, does it have a particular name? Apex. The apex. What direction does the apex point to? The left or the right? Left, left. left. to what a hip. Left. Yeah. So anatomically, when you're looking at a, a chest x-ray, when you're looking at a chest x-ray, you know how um, when you're looking at an x-ray, usually, it's not the best, yeah, um, this is a, probably a better one, All right? When you're looking at an x-ray, uh, the, what is the x-ray specialist called again? I forgot. Radiologist. Oh. Radiologist, right? Radiologist, has mixed yeah. it up. Yeah, yeah, a radiologist. <laughs> And normally they would put this, you know, this L. What does this L stand for? On an X-ray, yeah. the left side. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, it stands for the left side. So because you know it has to, you could turn it this way, you could turn it around the other way, yeah. And you study which side is the left side. So now you know it's the left side. Another way, if for some other reason they didn't put this on, it didn't come out, how would you know that this is the left side? The point of this is the heart here. Right? Notice there's the midline to the left of the midline. This is the heart. You have the majority of the heart. This is the apex. And what direction is pointing to? It always points to the left. Well, 99.999%. You could, you know, and that's how you know based on x ray, which side is the left side. What muscle is this that is right, that is coming all the way around here? Diaphragm. That's the diaphragm. Yeah. And this, this is a vertebra here. And what bone is this? Rhymes with avicle. Clavicle. Right, I say clavicle, right? Those are the hair that going there. And these are your lungs, because these are your ribs as well. But the major organ shown here, this is your heart. That's shown here, pointing to the left. And that's how you know it, that this is the left side. Even if you didn't have this, you always look for this. This heart. Let's see if we could look at another heart. If ever you want to get good images of heart, heart, there's a very good site, Radiopedia. You know, if you, you know, just go there and have a look. It's a very good site for X-rays. All right. So let's have another another look at a heart. But this one, you're not seeing the apex is clear, right? 
you're not seeing the apex is clear. But notice, um, you could always, how could you tell this if you're not seeing the apex? Could you still, and you know this is the heart, how could you then tell that there's the left side? Anybody could think of a... Of a, of a most of it is on the left side. I like how you're thinking, Frida. Yeah, because most of it. So this white, when you're looking at the x-ray, look for the white area around the spine. This is, again, this represents the midline. This is the mediastinum, because these are your lungs, the space between the lungs, and most of it is on the left side. All right? So that's how you know then that that's the heart itself. Very good. Let's go back. So... The heart within the mediastinum. The heart has chambers, atria and ventricles. The atria are the upper chambers, the ventricles are the lower ones. In terms of blood returning to the heart, where do they go in first? Do they go in the atria or the ventricles? The atria. Blood, they always go into the atrium. Atrium is a welcoming section. Right back in the day, I don't know if it's still how I remember it had this. Or when you go to a hotel, you know that area where the desk is, you know, the welcoming desk, that whole area is known as the atrium, right? And by yes. extension, you know, it's, it's a welcoming area. So therefore with the heart, the atrium, well, atria is plural of atrium. That's the area that welcomes the blood in. Let's see if we could follow the blood as it goes through the heart. So it's returned to the, it's always good to have a nice, let's look at the x-ray. Let's do this. Okay, yeah, this is good. Yeah. I'm sure we wouldn't get access to this. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. It's labeled for you do. We'll go with it. While it's loading up, let's just talk it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Excellent. All right. So this here, what is this? I forgot. There's a welcoming area of the heart. The right atrium. Right. How you know is it right? Because this side is the left. It points to the left. So therefore, you know this is the left. So this is the right atria. Blood returns to the right atria via the inferior and superior VC. What does VC stand for? Vena cava. Vena cava, right? So the inferior. Why do they call them inferior and superior vena cava? Probably. One is above. Yeah. So below. inferior means below, superior means above. So they call it inferior and superior because it returns but the superior returns blood from above the level of the heart, the inferior below the level of the heart in terms of the veins. So inferior, superior empties into the right atria. From the right atria, it goes into the... Right ventricle. Right, is the atrioventricular valve. It goes into the right ventricle. And from the right ventricle, is this blood coming into the heart? This is coming from your body, so from your systemic circulation. Is it oxygen rich or it doesn't have much oxygen in it or oxygen poor? Oxygen poor. It's oxygen poor. So therefore, where does it have to go to to get oxygen? The lungs. The lungs, yeah. So this is, it leaves then the heart and is going to the lungs. Now it leaves, now in terms of naming, Blood that comes into the heart, it comes in via the via veins. And when it's leaving, it leaves via arteries. Yeah? So in terms of naming it, since this blood now is leaving the heart, they call it artery. It's an artery. Now, I'll show you the anti-logic just now, but work with me. So this is an artery. It is going to the lung. What, there's a word associated with lung that begins with P. 
Pulmonary. So pulmonary refers to lung. There's a word beginning with C relating to heart. Cardia. Cardia. Cardia, right? There's a singer whose name has cardia in it. Not cardia, A, but... B. <laughs> but, but that's another story. That's another story for another day. It's Cardia B. Was it Cardi B? It's Cardi B, right? Yeah, Cardi yeah. B. But that's another story for a totally different day. Yes. Okay. So pulmonary artery, it goes to the lung. It gets its oxygen. So therefore, now the blood is returning to the heart. So this is a vein. And it's the pulmonary vein. So it returns by the pulmonary vein and it empties into the atria. Is this the left or the right atria over here? Left. Left atria. And then it goes to the through to the left. From the left atria, it goes to the left ventricle. Left ventricle. And then it leaves via this major artery Water. of the body. The aorta, the aortic artery. You all will see it in your professional career when they do autopsies, right? They take, um, they usually push right through the, through the aorta. Um, the, well, depending on what tool they have, uh, like a long, mm, like a tube-like device, just to, to keep it straight when they're making, and then they section the heart. So they, but they always keep the aorta straight. They push it through this tube and they hold it there and they make sections of the heart. And then they split the aorta to see if it has any fatty deposits in terms of checking um, type of death, you know, cause of death of the person. Yeah, so they look to see if it have any sclerotic buildup. Yeah, all right, just one second. Yeah, so they check. They check to see if there's any sclerotic buildup in the in the aortic arch, and by extension, the aorta. It's it's pretty it's pretty big, actually, because as you could mention, blood is coming out of this at what pressure? If you were to measure it here, what pressure is it? So on average, something over eighty. One twenty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. One twenty over eighty. Yeah, and this area here, it's an arch. And it's known as the what arch? Aortic arch. The aortic yeah. arch, yeah. Right? And blood, this is a major, major part of your body itself. So do take note of the flow of blood. It's usually a favorite question that comes for quizzes, multiple choice, you name it. So you should be aware of how the blood flows and through what structures it flows as well. Okay? Great. So the areas of the heart, the tissue layers of the heart, right? So when we're looking at the heart, the muscle of the heart is known as what? So myo refers to muscle and cardiac refers to heart. So the major muscle of the heart is known as the myo myocardium. Yeah, the myocardium, right? That is the major muscle of the heart itself. Anybody here like to eat liver? Chicken liver, that is. Me, I love liver. Um, yum, yum. liver. And one of the things you have to know, you, you can't cook it for very long, eh? The longer you cook it is get rubbery, not so? Correct is right, yeah. Correct is right. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Now remind me, that was one of my um when I was doing my studies, you know, that was one of the things churches, churches chicken. Where you still live had a church's chicken nearby. And um they had livers actually. They used to have this special liver special. You know, and liver and, and with the biscuit and fries. That was my thing, you know. And they would do it fresh because they would they couldn't cook it and leave it there because it'd get rubbery if they fry it and leave it there. So they'd always do it fresh, you know. And um, that was my Friday special thing. I used to look forward to that, my liver special. I digress. Let's get back to the topic, shall we? The heart, very important. Myocardium, meat of the heart, very, very um. And we will look at that in the lab next day in terms of the differences in the structure, how you can tell the, the differences, because it is striated and it looks very much like skeletal tissue as well, but it is a, a particular structure. I can tell the difference between cardiac and skeletal tissue. We'll speak more to that next week. All right, so the heart structure, the parts we have oxygenated and deoxygenated, we looked at that. 
So when you're looking at the electrical supply of the heart, just move with that and then we'll just move on rather quickly. The, ele the electrical supply of the heart. What is the pacemaker of the heart called? I'll give you a hint. We think about rhythms. When you think about rhythms, you think about drums. When you think about drums, what comes to mind is Africa. When you think about Africa, well, you have the bottom of Africa is South Africa, yeah? And South Africa, the initials for South Africa is SA. So the rhythm section of the heart is known as the? Yeah. The SA node. The SA node, yeah. That's how I remember it, right? The SA node. That's the one that actually generates the impulse to the heart itself. The SA node. That starts it up, gives you the, here it is, the sinoatrial node. And that actually generates the impulse. The SA node, then it goes to the AV node, comes down the um, bundle branch, left and right bundle branch, and then spreads the Purkinje fibers down to the individual cells, myocardia cells of the heart itself. But this is where it all starts, the SA node. Now, the AV node, interestingly enough, is a backup for the SA node. If something goes wrong, this could actually take over the capabilities of the SA node and generate impulses. Um, often, sometimes as well, when the SA node, now it gives a rhythm, very important as well, and you would see it in the lecture, mentioned in the lecture. Um, for those of us could throw back, you could throw back your days to primary school. You all remember your days in primary school? Some of it. <laughs> when, when you used to rub, rub your foot with, with baby oil? No? All right. You all remember sports day? And that sports day, I did. And so what is one of the major things they had? They needed to have some kind of rhythm section, right? Either a DJ or some band playing, right? A scout band or something, right? And they would give you the never had no DJ. You didn't have no DJ. You always had a band playing for you? No. Well, you all had somebody clapping? Yes, there's the students and the teachers. Marching. The noise. Oh, making it. the noise. What are you saying? Well, great. So they're making the noise, but they would give you a beat. So you know, left, right, left, right. If you didn't have that beat, everybody will be, you know, going their own way, right? Right, left, left, right. And it's confusion, not so? Yes, sir. yes sir. Now, would that be a problem for your heart? Now, remember the SA node, is, it generates impulses that travel along the, it goes along the AV, it goes to the AV node, and then right, left bundle branches to Purkinje fibers. And these goes to all the cells of the heart, the myocardia, these electrical impulses. Now, when a muscle cell receives an electrical impulse, what does it do? A muscle cell could only do one thing in response to electrical stimulus. What does it do? It begins with C. It contracts, yeah. It contracts. That's all it does. It contracts. So therefore, when, when this is generating, when it's generating um, this electrical impulse and travels, it causes the heart to contract. And then, of course, when it removes the stimulus, it relaxes. And, it, and when it contracts, all the blood that is within the ventricles or the atria, if let's say the atria contracts first, it squeezes it down to the ventricle, the atria relaxes, the ventricles then squeeze it out, and then they go to the pulmonary, through via the pulmonary um, artery, it goes to the lungs, returns via the pulmonary vein, and then it is ejected through the aorta itself. So you need then a coordination, a left, right, something have to be telling it when to coordinate. What happens if something goes wrong initially with the SA node? The heart begins to shake and quiver because everybody going left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right. So these cells, they're, they're receiving you know, mixed signals. And that situation when the heart is quivering, as they often like to describe it, like jello on a plate, is known as, it begins with F. You go into a state of? Fib. Fibrillation. Fibrillation, right? So fibrillation means it's quivering. And to stop it from fibrillating, what do you need? You need a device known as not an A fibrillator, not a B fibrillator, not a C fibrillator, but a, a defibrillator. 
right? If it's during surgery, you have internal paddles, but if it's um, not in surgery, you have external paddles. Sorry, you have external devices that you place on the chest. And in fact, now they have these devices that actually tell you where to put the um, put the pads on the chest. In fact, it's really, really, really nice devices and can really a big lifesaver, right? So you have these uh, pads you put and then it delivers that shock. And when it does it, it could actually restart the SA node and get all of these uh, cells back in order, right? So defibrillator, when the heart is fibrillating, gets it back in order. Very important, okay? All right. So we come to the last section, which is on for today, the blood vessels and the circulation. And we looked at it partially. The other thing in terms of the blood circulation, this is just something you have to go through, right? In, um, in terms of the circulatory system, the when you are looking at the circulatory system, right? So here you're looking at the veins and the arteries. Just keep in mind the major ones, right? So the subclavium, the auxiliary, the cephalic, inferior. We'll mention the inferior and superior VC, the hepatic. Or this is the portal system associated with the liver. Very interesting, right? Hepatic portal vein, brachial artery, the median cubital is showing the ulna and radial artery. When you look at these two, the ulna and radial, what bones run under here? Radius and ulna. Yeah, the ulna, which is continuous with the thumb, and the, sorry, the radius, which is continuous with the thumb and the ulna. So these are actually named, and with some of them, in terms of the nomenclature, they're named according to the bones they run close to. Very important one behind the knee is the popliteal artery. And why do you think it's hidden back there? Because it's important. If you get cut there, you'll bleed out in about probably eight to nine minutes. You'll be talking, you'll lose consciousness. And if left unchecked by about 10 to 15 minutes, you'll be talking with the ancestors, right? The popliteal, it's a deep seated art. It's right behind your knee. You can actually uh, push and feel it. You'll feel the pulsing in the artery. But that one is very important. If you get cut there, yeah, you have to stop that very, very quickly. All right. And here is your art. So when you're looking at the circulation, do take note of the major ones. So if you're looking at this, you know, descending aorta, common carotid, the vertebral internal carotid, basilar. In fact, there's a very good image. This is from Wikipedia. You could use this as your key in terms of the ones you're supposed to know. And nine and a half out of 10, this is always something that is brought on the quiz, either quiz or for your final exam, okay? So Wikipedia is a very good image in terms of knowing these um, arteries. How do you learn them? A very good way, have it on a card and walk around and keep looking at it. It's incredible what your subconscious could do. Just all you have to do is like read it once or twice a day. That's all you have to do and it will eventually stick. I assure you, it's very interesting how the brain works. All right. Arteries and vein. Um, cardiovascular system with our body system, major vessels, identify and describe the hepatic portal artery itself, all right? So the last thing I want to look at is the hepatic portal circulation. All right, so here it is, the hepatic some video, sorry. Right, nutrients. Um, it goes from the small intestines via these things, nutrients break down. But it, after the nutrients, right, they are right here. So here it is from the, is the large intestine from the ascending colon. So this is from your colon, it goes up. Here is your stomach, 
it passes through, it goes to the liver, right? And when it goes to the liver, of course, it goes through there. And we will look at that when we are looking more in more detail with the liver, right? This is where you have various functions occurring, detoxification, particularly your very Glad this happens when you drink alcohol in particular in terms of detoxing in the, the function of the liver. If we were to look at the, in terms of by mass, what is the largest organ in your body itself? I'll give you a hint, I just spoke about it. The liver. Yeah, the liver, it's really huge, right? It's very, very huge, it's the largest. And the reason why is because it constantly keeps cleaning it keeps cleaning all of the all of the blood in the body itself, right? So the products of digestion are absorbed into the capillaries within the villi. Digestive food moves through, then travels to the hepatic portal, veins to the liver. Liver monitors, and the hepatic is able then to deliver the blood to the circulatory system, right? So after all of the blood is absorbed, uh, is then delivers them, the, delivers the blood to the circulatory system. So the hepatic portal, do take note of it. A question usually comes on it as it relates to the labeling of the hepatic portal. So pay attention to this and ensure that you know the different areas. This is a very good um, diagram to know this particular one. All right, so let's take note in terms of the splenic vein, the interior mesenteric, the circulation right, of the veins themselves, superior, inferior mesenteric veins. Yeah, um, from the spleen itself, it goes through the hepatic portal vein. Okay, all right. And that's where I would want to stop for today. So for, in terms of what you usually would do, of course, you look at the lectures. When you when you do on any given day, right? What you'll do, this tells you here what is expected of you. So you know, review lecture one and two. You click on lecture one, click on lecture two. You get it. And the PowerPoint, click on the PowerPoint, have a look. Review the resources. Click on the word resources. You'll get the resources. Complete the online quiz. Click on online quiz. Right? You'll get the online quiz itself. Right. So you just follow um, what is said, right? So this tells you, and you complete the blood worksheet that is you, and deposit it in here, and it tells you the deadline. So on any given day, this is what you do. You just follow under the student's must, all right? Any questions? All right, I know today was a little bit long. Normally we wouldn't be this long. Right? because we're just touching on it. Usually this aspect would finish within an hour or so, and then you'll be left to do those other things. All right, so just today we went a little bit long because we didn't have two prior classes, okay? All right, well, that is it for me. So anybody have anything else to add? You know you could catch me on WhatsApp if you have any questions whatsoever, all right? So when you're, when, when you're having labs, you're having the lecture and he one time one hmm. after the that's one. a good that's a that's a good question that's a good question and maybe we, we could speak to that um next day in terms of how we could arrange to have that if we had having them back to back or if i could give both of the lectures for the lecture and lab at the same during the 8 to 11 period you know because similarly with the lab the format is similar to this you have certain things to do so i just lecture for a certain period of time so I'll give that some more thought and speak to it next week. All right? Yes, sir. Or, with, or before next week in the chat. Okay, so before Saturday, come just remind me. All right. Last thing I would like to add, anybody would like to be the class rep? Give it some thought, you know, class rep. So you'll be the liaison person, the go-between between the class and myself, um, you know, just give it some thought, yes? Yeah. If there's one person. So in that way, it's easier in terms of communicating for me to communicate to one person as opposed to everybody, you know, communicating or even calling me, you know, five, seven, you know, 
10 people calling. It's better just one person call in, in terms of communicating anything to me. All right. So, Afisha, Alana, Oreen, Brendan, CJ, Crystal, Elisa, Fiona, Frida, Hannah, uh, rep, person who is a junior Ramchara, um, Kathy, Kaylee, Kaleen, Lita, Mariah, Mira, Rosa, Shania, Shamika, and Tranel. It has been my distinct pleasure. All the best for the rest of your day. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Have a great day. Okay, same to you.